In this video, I'm showing you how solar panels are attached. You have a bracket, a, a foot that mounts to the structure. All right, next you have a saddle. Go onto the attachment and can be fastened with that screw. And then the, the rail clicks inside of this. Some manufacturers will just have a bolt, but it's pretty universal. A foot, a bolt or a bracket, and then the rail. So for these rails, you have like three main types of accessories. You have a clamp. This one clips on and then you're able to adjust it and it clips onto the frame of the solar panel. This is a T-bolt style where it goes into this channel, turns, locks into position, and then you can tighten something like an optimizer, an inverter, a rapid shutdown device or anything that needs to be secured to this rail for the solar panel. And the other one um, is the T-bolt, but it has a grounding lug. Um, you can attach that to the rail and then this would bite into some bare copper. These three components right here are basically everything you need. So the wires that come out of solar panels are PV wires and they have these uh, MC4 um, connectors or PV connectors on them. Generally, whether you're doing off-grid or anything, you will have some kind of electrical box that is, you know, flashed under the shingles or mounted to the rail and all of the wires from the solar panels will go into this box. <laughs> I'm installing a optimizer. Most solar panel systems in the United States, larger solar panel systems, either have a micro inverter under the panel, an optimizer under the panel, or some kind of rapid shutdown device. In this situation, I would generally mount this device right underneath maybe the to the side of it or under the middle. But for demonstration purposes, I'm putting it right here so you can see how it goes together. Um, so you can't just use any wire on the roof. Um, this is PV wire. So it, it looks really thick, but it's only 10 gauge. Um, this jacket around this wire is rated for outdoors. So you buy, you can buy PV wire and then there's a crimping tool that you can use to crimp on these PV connectors. I have another video showing how to do that but I'm going to crimp these on and then run the wires into this junction box. Now, um, if you're just doing a quick little DIY project, I would highly recommend just buying some pre-made um, whips, uh, some pre-made uh, wires, and you could just get one whip and then cut it in half, and then you have a negative and a positive, and you can just kind of cut it to length, and that way you don't have to buy, like I said, of, you know, any crimping tools. This one's cheap, it's off of Amazon. You can buy the whole set for like under 30 bucks, um, but it is cheap. When you're installing solar panels, you always want to ground the attachments or ground the frame of the solar panels. Um, these clamps are actually um, this racking system has integrated grounding. So everything that gets secured to this rail is connected and like bonded together. So you'll use six gauge um, solid copper in most situations. To summarize this, just about every mounting system is the same. Every manufacturer has a different spin on the different products they have and how it all goes together. But you'll have some kind of attachment that is specifically made for the roof type that you have. 
whether you have a tile roof or a metal roof or an asphalt shingle roof or which variation of that type of roof you have. Whatever mount you have on your roof attaches to a rail and then that rail goes underneath the solar panels. Uh, so let's talk about some of the tools that you're going to need. So most solar installers use an impact driver, not a drill, but an impact driver. And this is their go-to tool that they constantly have in their hand. With that impact driver, generally you're going to need some sockets. I like to get a, like a three eighths drive um, to quarter inch for an impact driver and then get a set of sockets. But you'll need like a seven sixteenths, a half inch, a nine sixteenths, and in some cases, you'll need like a, um, I believe it's like a six millimeter, um, like Allen, um, that I put on a, uh, impact socket as well. Along with that, you're going to need some kind of saw with a metal blade. Hey, thank you for checking out this video. I appreciate it. Uh, please like, and subscribe and check out the other content that I have.